Hey guys, Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today we are going to do this Class AB amp. We're going to take a first look at it. I was pretty impressed with what I saw as far as components go and the cost. It was a lot less than I thought it was going to be. Under 30 bucks, like 28 bucks, two channels. Uh, I believe it's 68 watts in a 4 ohms per side. So, pretty impressive. For Class AB, this is the Overture chip, one of the Overture series, the LM3886. It's one of Texas Instruments uh, chips that are supposed to be, you know, nice audio quality and low noise. Um, but with the part selection, I thought this was like definitely a winner. Something to, you know, could be something to start comparing some of these other things to. Some of these lower cost amps for sure. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at the how flat the gain is across the audio spectrum. Actually, I think I'm going to go out to about 50 kilohertz just to see if it rolls off. Because uh, I kind of like the idea of having a wide bandwidth so you get some good attack, some good high frequency, uh, you know, without rolling off at your high frequency, even if you can't hear it. Hey, uh, who knows what you can hear actually? I mean, I don't know, psychoacoustics, who knows what you can feel, you know. You feel me? <laughs> so what I'm saying is I just want to see how good of an amplifier this is and maybe something we can start comparing other amps to. Seems like it has good components. So let's come over here, take a closer look at the board, and I'll show you how I'm going to hook it up and connect it to the instrumentation over here, and we'll run some quick tests on this thing, all right? This would be just kind of a quick introductory to this new amplifier so we can kind of gauge it and see where we want to go from here. All right? All right, guys, let's do this. All right, guys, this is uh, the board. It's got this little plastic protection that it came with, input connector here, the 226 AC voltages come here, the return of the ground in the center. That's the bridge rectifier right there, the two big bulk capacitors. And look, we got some little uh, poly caps down here, these little blue guys and our input connectors and then it looks like a it looks like a second set of input connectors up here if you want to bypass this first stage so i think this stage is set up as a preamplifier and if you want to just go through into the second stage i think you just jump through these pins and come in here for the power amplifier stage these are the lm3886 amps Okay, here, let's take this off so we can see a little bit better. Okay. Yeah, let's just kind of keep this hardware in here, too. It looks like a couple of screws for something or another. <laughs> that was it, just two screws, okay. Um, all right, so yeah, it has a lot of uh, component tree for, for something under 30 bucks. This is pretty amazing, I think has these nice Wema caps and these nice Rubicon bulk capacitors. 10,000 microfarads each. That's, you know, rated 50 volts, so it's nice, nicely derated. And you can see the components here. It looks like nice metal film through-hole resistors. Here's your NE5532 op amp down here, the 8-pin. Here's the other set of connector pins. It has little jumpers so you can select it says in out and ground so i guess in to out is if you're coming here to output i guess and i i don't know i i don't know what that jumper does yet but right now it's in the position of jumping in and out together yep on both sides okay and then it has another whole set of uh, ca capacitors out here for the output section hold these guys even more stable and I'm not sure if these guys are transistors or voltage regulators. Have to take a closer look. They're kind of squeezed in there. So The guy here on the left looks like an LM7812. That'd be a plus 12 volt linear regulator. It looks like ST down there in the bottom corner. ST micro. Um, yeah, the guy on the right here looks like an L7912. So that would be... Uh, negative 12 volt regulator here's the LM3886 parts down here 
All right, here I'll show you the flip side of the board. So input connectors right here. All right, so the 26, 26 and ground, you can see the markings for the input power connection. And then over here, in and ground, those two pins right there for the connector. There's an eight pin uh, IC op amp on this side. Over here on this side. Looks nicely marked. Here's the ground and output for left side right side over here I mean it looks like a nice layout it says it's two ounce copper so that means it's two ounce thick uh, one ounce is kind of a standard half ounce for some people use for digital circuits one ounce for power or two ounce this one has two ounce copper on both sides so you can see nice large ground planes this is where there's no copper this is all copper this part so you can see the routing it, it looks like it's a pretty nicely laid out board i think there's a closer view of the input circuit with the wema caps and the rubicon cap 10,000 mic and also the bridge rectifier you can see a little blue poly caps right here decoupling the bridge it looks like all right so i just Screwed those into the input terminal there, plus mines for my generator. All right, and then these three leads, the red one's my plus, the black is minus, and the green is the ground. Center reference. So I'm just going to clip them on. I'm going to take the plus and black. I could put them on either one. It doesn't matter because it's AC, right? The bridge rectifier is going to steer the voltage to the correct place on these caps. So I'm just going to put plus on this guy. And I'll put ground in between and the, on the center one. That's the center reference between the two plus and minuses. Okay. All right, so that's my quick power setup, power input signal. Now I just have to get my output connected. All right, now I'm going to connect my 4 ohm load to these terminals here. All right, so kind of spread the plastic out a little bit, getting those in there, but got them in there so there's the 4 ohm load all right and we'll check the temperature on these with the thermal gun while we're doing this and I think we're ready to go we just got to bring up power here slowly and then we will put a signal in here and we'll watch it with the scope so you know what let's set up the instruments all right we're gonna make this simple for this first one we're just gonna look at the uh, output voltage ground is whoops grounds there let me connect that and i'll connect this times 10 position on the scope probe right here so by the way the power supply for series this buttons out this buttons in so then it sets it up in series where this is one output this out the other output slave master so red goes to the red and the minus here and the red here are tied together because they're in series like a battery so this guy is just our center post our ground and this is a, the minus the black so this are uh, minus 15 and our plus 15 at this point and at this point with no signal it's 0.11 amps per side okay so this is the power supply it's dual tracking this meter is set for volts and this one volts here too I got them both at 2.3 just to show they're both as I bring it up they both come up together but I'll switch this one to current so we'll look at current here and voltage here okay let's just go ahead and bring it up I'm gonna try to bring it all the way to 30 and let's just see how much current it actually takes it takes a little bit of current but we just don't want to see anything run away so I bring it up nice and slow now, by the way, on the board, I can see some LEDs that lit up. Yeah, there's 30 volts. Okay, now look, 30 volts is one, uh, 0.14 amps. Now, that's 0.14 amps on each side. See that? One, three, one, three volts. 
it's 31 volts on each side, 31.6 and 0.13, okay? All right, let me just take you down the board so you can see the LEDs. Okay, I dimmed the lights a little bit so you can see it's pretty bright red and green LED. I'll just bring the voltage down and the caps are kind of discharging so once it discharges, I'm gonna bring it up slow and let's watch those LEDs to see how they power. I'm just gonna, okay, red comes on right away. Looks like they both kind of come on right away. We're about 15 volts, so yeah, I'm not sure what they indicate yet. We'll find out, right? Okay, for the scope setup, we're only using channel one, the yellow probe here. So the other ones are turned off. So when I select this, you can see DC coupling, one meg, inverts off, 20 meg bandwidth. We'll go to full bandwidth. And we're on probe 10x setting. We're set at one volt per division right now in the output. Uh, I think maybe that's okay for right now. But let's center it on the scale. So I'll just push it in. Centers it. The trigger is set on channel 1. And it's set up here. It says 2.1. So it's up here. So let me move that down. I guess I could just push it in. Center it since we're going to see an AC signal. And it's set for auto and pulse is what that shows so all right i think we're ready to go we got some measurements set up here but we're not really looking at it right right now you know what let's set up uh measurements let's read the rms off the ac waveform let's do that we'll do peak peak two go measure remove measurements remove them all all right so now let's go ahead and add some measurements go to measure add measurement we're going to go RMS, well, on channel one, we want to have our source channel one there. So let's go ahead and choose RMS. And then we'll also choose, uh, let's also choose peak to peak up here. Okay, turn off the menus. RMS, peak to peak. Okay, uh, generator is putting out four millivolts. That's really nothing. I think one volt um, from the function generator will probably give us a full swing here. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up the power supply again. I'm going to turn it on. You'll hear the fan turn on. Okay, it's at 31.6 volts plus minus. And we're seeing a little bit of output. We're seeing about 400 millivolts peak to peak on the output. We got 4 millivolts peak to peak going in and we're getting about 400 millivolts out. <laughs> So, I'm not sure if that says anything about the gain that yet. Let's just go ahead and bring up the gain a little bit. Now, I can tell you the IC is getting really hot already. Has a 4 ohm load with really no heat sinking, so it's pretty darn hot. So, we'll get 1 volt peak peak on the output. Okay, that's 1 volt peak peak. Yep, that chip is pretty darn hot. 4 ohm load is pretty rough without a heat sink. Yep, look at that. 88 degrees already. That's only a 1 volt peak to peak output, 450 millivolt RMS, and a 4 ohm load. Man, that's hot. Once you get over 60C, that can burn you. Okay, guys, what I did is I dropped the uh, supply voltage to plus minus 15 volts coming in. Even though we're only putting out 1 volt peak to peak before, we had. 31 volts across the amplifier so that current and that voltage it was dropping a lot of power so i dropped it down to plus and minus 15 volts and i was able to take the rms up to one volt okay so now we got one volt and let's see i'll go back to one volt per division here and let's see if we could possibly get four volts out that might be asking too much but let's try We'll get a thermal shutdown if it doesn't like it. So that's two volts right now. We're 4.14. I'll just drop it down right at four volts even. See how hot that's getting. All right, so we're at one volts. 
We're one volt and we got about 685 millivolts. Let's try to get up to two volts. Okay, we're just barely over two volts RMS. So that is two times two is four. V squared R, right? Four divided by four. So we have about one watt output. And that thing's pretty warm right now, I can tell you. Okay, let's sweep the generator. Okay, there's our uh, two volt peak to peak. And I'm gonna turn on the sweep generator. Okay, now the sweep generator sweeping from 20 hertz to 50 kilohertz in 10 seconds. And see how flat it is across here? Now I'm gonna try different time bases just to see if we can capture something. See that? You can see it getting faster and faster. Okay, there we go. But doesn't it look pretty flat? If you read two volts peak RMS there, that doesn't really change much. 1.989 maybe two volts. So it looks pretty darn flat, right? All right, and there is a one kilohertz signal, sine wave, uh, two volts peak to peak. All right, and the THD meter is reading 0 0.05. If you can see that, that's, that's a 0 0.05 THD. All right, guys, that was just an introductory so this amplifier looks pretty good right now. It looks pretty flat across the spectrum. <laughs> it looks pretty flat across the spectrum. And I need to put a heat sink on it so we can get some more power out of it. And come back and jump into this a little deeper, okay? I'll show you the data sheets. We'll go over some of the, the neat parts about this amplifier. All right? Hope you like that. Thumbs up. Appreciate that, guys. See you next time. Thanks for watching.